Hello fam, welcome back once more to Irish Agility, a platform where we simplify Agile. A platform where we strive to break down Agile related concepts to the granular level. Yesterday, one of my connections reached out to me on LinkedIn and she was asking me this question, right? She wanted to know what are some of the qualitative or quantitative data that she can capture in her end of spring report. Do you currently write end of spring reports? If yes, what are some of the data that you clearly capture in your end of spring report? Fam, if you're new to this channel, please join the family by subscribing. Turn your notification bell on so that next time I'm dropping another content, you are automatically notified. So today, I'll be going through, based on my personal experiences, some of the quantitative or qualitative data that you can clearly capture in your end of spring report, right? So what's an end of spring report and why is it important in the first place? An end of spring report is just a summary or a snapshot of what your team did within their scope of spring. It might be two weeks, it might be three weeks, it might be one week. What did they accomplish during that sprint? What were some of their challenges, right? And how did they learn from those challenges? Those are some of the things that you can capture in your end of spring report. And why is it important? It is very important so that somebody who is not part and parcel of the team's day-to-day -day development activities, like management, like business stakeholders, they can clearly look at your spring report and they can deduce, they can tell what the team was able to accomplish, what the team did within the duration of their sprint, and what were some of the bottlenecks or the challenges that they encountered. Might be in the long run, you're trying to you know, partner with business or with management to help you resolve a problem. And they ask you a question, have you been able to document this problem in the past? Clearly, you can use your sprint report to actually show how, how you documented that aspect. So a sprint report can be instrumental in so many, many different perspective so that said what are some of the data that you can capture in your end of spring report number one you want to make sure that you're clearly starting with your spring goal what was a spring goal when you came together during spring planning what did you all agree that was your spring goal what did you all commit as a spring goal by the team right it is very important to start with your spring goal based on your spring goal somebody will be able to see how the how the team progressed right and how they finally ended right number two what business value did your team deliver you want to make sure that you're clearly capturing you're clearly articulating those business goals that the team delivered might be the goal of the team was to come up with uh, an mvp dashboard of a particular application system that your team is working on or might be the way to come up with a payment gateway were they able to come up with that payment gateway? Or maybe they were just coming up with a, with a functionality. Let's call it search functionality, right? What was the business value delivered? You want to clearly capture the business value delivered by the team. As a Scrum Master, work with the product owner. Work with your team to clearly capture the business value that the team delivered, right? Number three, you also want to make sure you're capturing the number of stories that was planned by the team vis-a-vis -vis the number of stories delivered what we call throughput. I'm not talking of velocity. I'm talking of the number of stories that the team planned. Maybe they planned 15 stories, 14 stories, 12 stories. Were they able to complete those 12 stories? And while you're presenting their throughput, also try to categorize the different types of stories. How many stories were enablers? How many stories were spikes? How many stories were business stories? It is very important to capture this data so that over time, somebody can look at your spring report and tell, you know, the degree of shippable increment, the degree of value that your team delivers in a sprint or over time, right? Number four, you also want to make sure that you're clearly capturing the number of defects right? What were the number of defects that were identified in that sprint, right? As you capture the number of defects, it's also important to pinpoint the source of those defects. Were those defects captured in SITs during system integration testing? Were they captured while performing user acceptance testing? Or were they captured in production? It is very important to actually identify or clearly capture the number of defects that were identified during the scope of your sprint so that over time, business can use this data to identify or to determine the defect leakage in your team within the environment, within the train. It is very, very important, right? Number five, your velocity, right? 
what was the team's velocity in that sprint. Why you present your velocity? It is very important to also present your historical velocity. Why is it important to present your historical velocity? So that somebody can look at your trend. They can look at the trend and tell how the team has been progressing over time. They can tell if the team has been progressing or digressing. And based on that, you know, we can start asking key questions, right? And number six, based on the code that your team wrote, right? Based on the value you, you delivered, right? What percentage of code was manually tested? What percentage of code was automated? It is very, very important, right? Nowadays, most organizations are seeing the value of what? Automation. So most environments or most organizations are diving towards automation. Number one, it is cost effective. You can get this information from your quality tester. And last but not the least, you want to make sure you capture your challenges. You want to make sure you capture your blockers, any downtime, right? Might be in the course of your sprint, might be in the, within your sprint. You had environmental issues. Some environments were down. Might be SIT was down and testers couldn't test, you know, the different stories on time. Any downtime, make sure you document those downtime so that somebody can clearly see how it affected your team, how it affected your deliverables. It is very important to mention all your blockers. It is very important to mention your challenges. It's very important to mention even things that you escalated, but you couldn't get them resolved. Clearly capture those things in your spring report. So fam, we've come to the end of this session. If you found this content useful, please show us some love, right? Join the family by subscribing. Then your notification bell on start next time I'm dropping a similar content, you're automatically notified. And if you're looking for a safe Scrum Master certification, feel free to reach out to us. We will help you master the fundamentals of SAFE. Or if you're a Scrum Master just looking for ways to be of value to your team, reach out to me and you and I can have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Peace.